Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to a sunny Twickenham stoop here for the Tyrrells Premier 15's semi-final second leg between Harlequins and Wasps. Beautiful day, track is in the superb condition. And to top it all, I've got Rugby Royalty alongside Sarah Hunter, England captain, grandstand winner, World Cup winner. Good afternoon, Sarah. Good afternoon, Johnny. Of course, uh, Sarah is a, a player and coach at uh, Loughborough Lightning. And of course, with the, uh, with the new Tyrrells League, there's been an injection into the, the women's club game. What effect has that had on the, on the standard of play on the league? Oh, it's had a huge effect. I mean, the money that's allowed clubs has given them improvements to invest in their infrastructure, so their coaching, their S&C, their medical, which allows players to improve. And we've seen it across the season that it's improved the game as a whole. And I think we always knew that this new investment into the game was, was going to help improve the, the level of the game. But actually, we've seen that accelerate even faster than I think anyone thought, which is really fantastic to be a part of. And on the field, have you noticed just how tough it's been with, with those other sides? And then, as you say, the, the level of S&C, but also on the coaching side, just the standard rugby across the board has, has improved somewhat as well, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. From both a playing and coaching um, side, the, the level stepped up. So people are, are learning more. They're fitter, faster, stronger, which is allowing them to do things they've probably never done before. The time that we can put into analysis is just um, widening their knowledge of the game, which is it's happening at our programme, but I know it's happening across the game and we've seen the games competitive. I mean, Wasps Quinns last week speaks for itself in terms of how close it was and that's the level that we've seen across the, across the league this season. Well, nicely shoehorned in. We, we should talk about today's game, of course, the second leg and a new league format. But last week, of course, they met at Twyford Avenue. It was a really tight game. Quinns coming out on top 25 points to 19. Uh, but it was Wasps who started the stronger. Um, with a superb break um, from uh, from Liz Craig. Yeah, it was. I think um, in a in a semi final game, you've got two teams finishing second and third, going for it. That uh, you uh, you want to see the, the levels of competition, and you need a team to put down a marker um, for it. And uh, Wasp certainly did that with the first try. Well, they scored first, of course, but then it was Harlequins who hit the power button with a couple of tries in quick succession. Yeah, it was, and that's the thing that Harlequins can really do. The tempo that they play at, they can they can really squeeze teams, and they did that with their three tries um, coming quickly after um, Wasps put themselves ahead. Yeah, Abby Scott with that first try, and and then McCormack, and then a quick tap penalty for that uh, for that McCormack try. But uh, I guess one of the moments of the game was uh, not a try, but a. a, a a superb run and a bit of defensive work from the world's best 15. Yeah, uh, Daniel Walkman to, to chase down Fee Pocock, who's got speed herself, was one of the phenomenal things that you, you see in the game. You've seen people hear and talk about Nolly's attacking play, but her defence is just as strong. Yeah, unfortunately, after that tackle, that uh, Nolly Waterman then got a, a yellow card. But it was Harlequins who scored after that. Yeah, it was. And I think... Um, that when Harlequins are on top and they're playing well, they can really um, put teams away. But we obviously saw that Wasps came back in early in the second half to, to make a real game of it when things looked like it was getting away from them. But uh, it was Wasps who then uh, counteracted that, that Bradshaw score. And as their fly half, it seemed to go into a shell a little bit uh, last week. Uh, Louise Dodd and just powered over from, from short range. Uh, but it was quickly added on to uh, by one of the stars of England and Wasps as well. Yeah, Abby Dow's really come to the fore this season. It is, she's been in great club form, great form for her country. And um, when Wasps really needed her to, to get that ball, she's done what she did all season and finished off a, a great try. Yeah, it was typical Wasps, that kind of try, the carbon copy of the way that they're trying to play the game. But of course, with the final play, it was Harlequins at the final say. Yeah, it was, and I think towards the end of the game, Harlequins had a lot of pressure and, and probably got um, the, the result that um, they probably deserved overall in that at the game, so it'll be interesting. It's only a six-point um, uh, lead that they've got that Wasps have to overcome, so it'll be a, a great game this afternoon, I'm sure. And in terms of both those sides, uh, having watched that semi-final, and as, as, as well as you know them both, what do they need to get right today? What will they be encouraged to do what they did last week, or what were they discouraged to stay away from today? Yeah, so from Harlequin's point of view, I was really impressed with the tempo that they played at. Um, they had quick ball from, from the ruck and I think Wasps will need to try and get there and slow it down just so they don't have as much freedom to play with. When they got those offloads away, they looked really dangerous, but their unforced errors and their discipline probably let them down at times, which allowed Wasps to come back into the game. And as for Wasps? 
Yeah, they, they had a lot of success through their forward pack, but they've got some fantastic players out there and, and speed through. Um, Daniel Waterman, Abby Dow, um, and, and the, the other wing as well. So they, they really need to look to build a platform to really get those players into the game early so they can really ask questions of the Harlequins defence. So I need to get that set piece right. Well, uh, I spoke to both coaches earlier on, soon after they arrived at the ground. Uh, here's Karen Finley, the uh, co-head coach of Harlequins ladies. Karen, second leg of this uh, semi-final. And you bring a squad here with huge amounts of experience, not just club, but international as well. Yeah. Does that give you an edge today? Um, I think it's really, really important. We've got a really good blend. Um, I think it's the platform we've based ourselves on for last season and particularly this season. Um, the development of really good all-round club rugby players at the top of the Women's Premiership is as important as, as the real a talent we've got in terms of the international representation that we've got from our players. So I think a combined blend of that plus the phenomenally outstanding young talent that's coming up and through the game. You know, when you, you've got a 17-year-old starting fly half, just as per the men's game, ironically, that's really good. That's a really good sound basis to play from. It was a really tight game last week. What have you been working, what have you been polishing this week to make sure you get to that final? I think there's been a couple of things for us. Um, it's cutting errors out in our game and, and just staying on our feet more at the breakdown and cutting out those infringements that can actually, if you if you don't get it right, they can change the momentum in a game. And I felt that that's what we did last week. When we came out in the second half, we had a clear thought process. We wanted to do certain things and it was our own mistakes that cost us dearly in that first 10, 12 minutes of the game last weekend. So we've worked on cutting out that. We've worked on adapting our game. Hopefully you'll see that during the game. Um, boxing a bit clever. Um, we, we did a really good job of disrupting the Wasps line out last weekend. So, you know, if they've done their homework, they'll have tried to change that. Well, we've equally tried to change that to maybe put in different things in attack and equally, you know, look at our defensive pattern across that line out and set piece. But things like that. But also just, just I, I want our players to give them a great platform, fantastic venue. Let's just go and play rugby and express ourselves. The uneducated would say it's your forwards against their backs. It's obviously not as simple as that. But where is this game going to be won or lost today? I think our backs would have something to say about that, to be honest. Um, I think I think Seppi's platform has got to be there. You, it doesn't matter what kind of game of rugby you play, your scrum has got to function, your line-out has got to function. Anybody thinks different really naive, I would suggest. Um, that that There'll be a huge battle there. I think there'll be a battle in terms of how good Seppi's defence is. Um, you know, we... we, we there, there's numerous threats on both sides. I think there's exciting outside backs on both sides. I think Fiona Pocock had a phenomenal game last weekend. I think she's as big a threat for us. And with Rachel Insider, equally, you know, they've got Nolly in their back three and they've got Abby Dye. So we, we can't loosely kick. We know that. Um, but I think I think it will be one on small margins today. I'd, I'd like to think, and that's the reason these two teams are here, sitting in second and sitting in third are more than deserving of both teams, and I would expect it to go right to the wire. I'd be I'd be surprised if it doesn't today. Enjoy your day. Lovely. Hope so. Giselle Maven out, the uh, head honcho of Wasp Ladies. Giselle, a bit of a run in to get to third in the table. Two-legged semi-finals. You keep having to go to the well with this young squad. Is that a hurdle today or a really positive challenge? I find it really positive. Um, from my perspective, normally to be in a semi-final um, as a young side, it's a really big challenge, particularly against a side that won the, the, the Women's Premiership last year. And the way that it usually goes is that the inexperienced side doesn't win. Well, that's what happened. But instead of having to do another year's graft to get to the semi-finals again, we get the opportunity again next week. So the experience that this young group has got um, and a lot of my club players have never been in this situation before. Well, they did it last week and now they get to go again with just a six-point deficit and we're all really excited to have that opportunity. You talk about that six-point deficit, really, really tight last week. What do you need to get right or better this week to get to that cup final? Well, again, I think part of the reason being that it was a semi-final, um, that there was a lot of nerves around, so our handling wasn't particularly special and our line-out wasn't very good. Um, Quinns are superb at line-out, both in terms of attack and defence, and so we really have to. We've worked very, very hard this week to try and put that right. Um, it is one of their strengths, and we're aware of that, but we think we can do better than we did. And then the handling was, was pressure and, and nerves and all of the rest of it. Well, they've done that now too, and only with a six-point deficit. So if we put that together... Um, and we cut our error count down, we think we've got a really good opportunity. You've got some world-class backs out there today. Lovely day, nice track. How confident are you? It's wasp the weather. Thank you, Ty. <laughs> the weather. Thank you.
Giselle Maida there as the teams come out. Was leading the way, Kate Holder, the Was captain, followed by Nick Smith. Big, big day for this Was team here in the sunshine at the Twickenham Stoop. Harlequins will follow them. Let's have a look at the runners and riders then. Harlequins first, the home team. Minimal changes for both sides. Quinton Force into a change in that front row. Eldora and Tudor back for four weeks following a red card in their second team game on the Sunday. Going in with stuff now facing the number three shirt. Otherwise, the pack remains the same. Abby Scott, superb last week at the line-out. There's Powell there with Shaw and Brown in 17 tries to her name this season. In the back to Rachel Burford leads the side. One of the most consistently outstanding players in the women's game. The other change on the wing, Ellie Miles starts ahead of Natasha Bradshaw. Watts also make a change in the front row. Uber experienced Claire Purdy starts on the loose end in place of Hannah West, who's moved to the back row. Liz Craig scored a cracker at Twyford Avenue last week. Louise Dodd, another one of Trice sheet last yeah, week, continues at 10, but she may well want to get okay. the ball wider today because there's some serious toys outside. Abby Dow, eight tries in her five England okay. caps and making up the back three. Nolly Waterman, who needs no introduction, suffice to say, she's the world's best fullback. On the benches, well, there's plenty of experience for both, really. You only have to look at Hannah Edwards wearing 21 for Wasps, an experienced campaigner with over 140 caps for Wasps. The referee for this one is the former Gloucester prop, so we should have some decent contest at the scrum, Nick Wood. Six-point game then. Second leg of the Tyrrells Premier 15 semi-final second leg here at the Stoop. It's Harlequins against Wasps, and it's Wasps who get us underway. And Shauna Brown immediately into the contact. It's not an area she shies away from at all. And then it's Sainer. So he's Sainer. Burford. Known for a kicking ability, but it's certainly an area that uh, she's worked on of late. It's going to be interesting to, to see how both these teams approach the game. We've been here for a couple of hours, uh, Sarah. It's very interesting. You, you were making the point to me that was out there warming up a good half an hour before Harlequins. Yeah, they came out um, just before uh, two o'clock, which obviously means they've been on their feet a lot longer than, than Quinns have. Quinns sort of came out for a short, sharp warm-up. So it'll, it'll be interesting in these opening stages just to see um, which one fares the, the better. Yeah, was spent the morning together, had breakfast together, being exciting. Well, they're talking about is they're only six points away from Harlequins, the reigning champions, of course, beat Bristol. Sorry to remind you, Sarah, and in last year's final. Only single leg semi finals, of course, last year. With Tyrrells coming in, the injection of, of money into the, the women's club game. With these two leg semi finals, Saracens up against Gloucester Hartbury, of course, later on today. It's interesting in these early stages that um, we spoke that Quinns played with a lot of tempo last week and, and Wasps really had to probably slow their, their ball down at the breakdown, but we've seen Wasps early on really try and get there. Justine Lucas has been in there a few times, actually won the turnover, and unfortunately it was just a little knock on there, but um, a good start by them. Let's use that. Here's Wasps. You say it was felt they were really, really close, and, and felt that uh, if they could improve certain areas of the game, uh, set piece we we spoke about before the game, didn't we? And the line out in particular, they only won 40% of the line out last week. Was and uh, they've got to get that area right today because they do have some wonderful backs out there who can score some fabulous tries, as we saw Abby Dow last week. Yeah, and imagine that Wasps have worked hard on that. Um, Amy Kakane probably leading that in, in the area that she's proficient in, but Abby Scott, having played with Amy Kakane at England, knows the, how she throws and has probably had more ball thrown to her by Amy Kakane than her, her own Quinn's um, hooker. So that'll be an interesting battle there uh, today as well. Nicole Smith taking it up and Ms. Wassey break free.
Nick Smith again from number eight. It was just forward. It wasn't to Vicky Jackson, the uh, the former England fly half, wasn't it? She can play uh, all across that met that midfield, but. Um, her understanding of the game is is very very important to this uh, to this was side. Yeah, and Vicky De Jackson was was quite dangerous for for them last week. Um, sometimes you don't really know what she's going to do with the ball, but her offloading um, ability to to get in behind defenders is is really quite strong. So I think they'll be looking for her to to connect with Abby Dow um, out there. Well, Nick Wood uh, in the middle. I was say, she got a, a decent contest at scrum time. He's lost a bit of timber, isn't he? Uh, and lost it in a, in a very good way. He's, uh, he, he's in fine shape, Nick Wood. Yeah, he certainly doesn't look like the traditional um, props. Uh, this will be an interesting contest at scrum yeah. time because you've got Vicky Cornborough at loose head for Harlequins going against England teammate Justin Lucas at tight head. And they'll have scrummed so many times together in training. So it'll be interesting to see how that one unfolds today. Ellie Miles, that change in the back line for Harlequins for Natasha Bradshaw, despite Bradshaw scoring a try last week. There's Shauna Brown again, very interesting character. She's uh, had an eclectic life so far, and now she's breaking into that uh, that England squad got capped in the Autumn Series against Canada, and then uh, again uh, another cap in the Six Nations, but it's Harlequins with that quick tempo, the quick ball from the ruck. Riley. Leanne Riley, England's number nine throughout the Six Nations campaign. Lovely from Burford, as you expect. McCormack has played some sevens. Holly Myers, she's very comfortable in the open spaces, the Scotland International. Use her a great deal in the line out as well. She's an athletic customer. Fee Fletcher, vice captain. That ball slowed down again, though. And was compressed. Yeah, Wasps are doing a great job of going for the ball. So you can see their, their players are, are going in and trying to, to get past it, to get their hands on. And if they can't, um, then they're going to be taking to some effort to remove from Quinn. So they're going to have to put more people in, which slows the ball down and means there's less numbers out for them to attack with. Good foray, though. Over that gain line. The young fly half, Eddie Green. Just only just 17 years of age. Yeah, that even makes you feel old, doesn't it? Yeah, it definitely does. But she's in good hands having Rachel Burford outsider and Leanne Riley insider. Uh, the experience of those two that they've had um, will really help her along. Obviously, Rachel Burford has played some time at Fly Half this season for us, so no doubt they're, they're guiding her through and offering expert um, advice to her. It's always nice and just sandwich that kind of player. I say just uh, 17 years of age. Last week a conversion and a, and a penalty. But today is only her fifth start of senior rugby. That's incredible. I mean, it goes again with, with what um, the RFU want to do with this league is to invest in the younger players coming through and, and provide them with that support that they haven't had before with the S&C and the medical, like I've said before, the, to really develop them at an early age and expose them to, to senior rugby when they're physically and mentally ready for that. She is one of those players. We've seen her in the last few games. And last week, there's a real stillness, a real calmness. Sally Miles, who's who's down and, and struggling. This will be interesting now. First um, line out of the game for Wasps. Obviously, having struggled last week against Quinn and the formidable Abby Scott in the line out that um, defensively reads line out so well that will be interesting to see what they do here. And they just need some ball to play off, create a platform to unleash their backs to, to attack with. I, and it wasn't a technical one, correct me if I, I'm wrong, <laughs> no doubt you jump at the chance. Um, but it wasn't technically for was an issue at the line out per se, was it? It was just the fact that Quinn's excellent in, in defence of the line out time. Yeah, absolutely. They've obviously got Deb McCormack there as well, who um, plays for Scotland um, and sort of 
runs their line out. Uh, and then you've got Fee Fletcher as well, who, when they're international players away, has really stepped up. Like you said, she's vice captain, so she's taken on a lot of that um, sort of leadership role in that sense. So they've got a lot of people there asking questions of the Wasps attack. Um, Wasps just need to be confident in what they can do because they show that they can will ball. They just need to back their drills and be accurate in what they do. And there we see that they, they've won ball off the top, which hopefully gives them a platform now to now to play off. Yeah, that's correct. It's so important where they're going to throw that ball, of course. Ella Sheffield, the, the line-out caller in the second row. Yeah, they just looked a lot more confident what they were doing, their, their speed across the floor and, and their accuracy in, in their lift and their time and just seemed a bit more. Obviously, you've probably had a bit more time together as well to, to practice that. And often, often it's more than not just the time and repetition, repetition of doing the line-outs, doing your options that will get you the, the success at line-out time. It was a superb turnover from, from Chloe Edwards. And Harlequin's turning that ball over. As you say, Wasp would be really pleased with part one of, of that phase. They, they got the line out ball, caught it well, took it off the top. And of course, Harlequin's did contest the line out, but uh, weren't able to, to snatch it. Liz Craig moving to the middle of the line out superbly well for, for Wasp. But then they turn that ball over. It, it's. What are we coming up to eight minutes? Uh, it's been a funny start to a semi final. I mean, effectively, it's a, a, I called it earlier, it's a, a cup final. And it, it is, isn't it? It's only a six point game, but it's been a funny, tentative start. Yeah, absolutely. You see, usually see in big games like this when um, everything matters is that um, teams take a little bit of time to find a way, build themselves into the game. You probably find errors um, that you wouldn't normally uh, find occurring in, in sort of the regular season and league games. So, yeah, I think I think we'll soon see people starting to find their flow in and get a bit of a handle on the, on the game. Let's hope so. Conditions are perfect. It's perfect. Nice battle, isn't it, between Kate Holder? Was captain and Burford, the uh, the Harlequins captain today, at inside centre. Riley, just a loose pass picked up superbly well by Catlin. Pocock, just amazed seeing live Ellie Green. She is one of those players who just seems to have time on the ball she's so cool and calm in everything she's doing yeah absolutely i think that's the the real sign of a a good fly half is that they make everything look effortless and like i said before with with people inside and outside of that are, are sort of controlling and and telling her where to play and where the space is it just allows the fly half to have a little bit extra time on the ball and, and make those decisions if people are feeding into her they go to the front this time but provide a little bit right she's a german international at 15s and 7s as well. Studying just down the road here at St Mary's, actually, in the second row. Wasps are doing really well here. They've, they've obviously won the ball, got the drive on, and the players at the front of the line-out are working. You see Justine Lucas there, staying in there, just allows the team to, to keep going forward. If she leaves that, that line-out there, then it allows the Quinns... Um, player in through there and to get their hands possibly on the ball but they've done that really well to retain it and hopefully create another platform to play off Dodd, little slip ball around the back to Abby Down you'll see Rachel Burford just plugging that hole saw it uh, training this week uh, sorry sports park Rachel Burford defending where everything Abby Down is going to come into that line and you saw that there Riley Myers did well to stand his feet and it's older. The England Royals sevens player really has grown as a player in the last two, three years. It's Nolly Waterman just clearing it downfield and it's real arm wrestle so far, isn't it? Bradshaw, an early replacement, started last week, had to uh, be happy with a place on the bench this week. Cornbra. Cornbra. Great, and then it's just about brought down by Waterman. Two England internationals. Now, Harlequins on the front foot, Edwards. Neat little ball inside from Fletcher, but it's turnover by Wasp, and Dow says, let's go. 
Yeah, Harlequins probably just need to start looking after their ball a little bit better. That's now two or three times that they've got into a really good attacking position and just haven't looked after the ball well enough at, at the breakdown area. So I'm sure they'll 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 sharpen that up over the next next few phases. Claire Purdy going in there, rolling back the years like a, a good Bordeaux, isn't she, Claire, Claire Purdy? She is. You know exactly what you, you'll get from, from Purdy. She's very experienced and, and will just add a bit of a, 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 a forefront um, up front in, in, the, in the forwards. Would it? Riley, that line speed again, Kukane, she's offside though, says Nick Wood. Just a little bit too eager, Amy Kukane that time. Yeah, and Harlequins it, can push back to uh, towards the Wasp 22. Yeah, Amy Kakane is very fast out the blocks, and obviously they're just a, a little bit too quick, but she will put um, attacking players under pressure with her line speed. Of course, the Tyrrells 2015's final. A couple of weeks' time for you. A Leeling Trail finals at Vallis Way. The 3 o'clock kickoff, that's the 29th of April. Get yourself down here. It promises to be a superb occasion. Looks like it's probably going to be Saracens against one of these two teams. Of course, Saracens and Gloucester Harbury playing at 6 o'clock this afternoon or this evening up at Allianz Park. Well done. Back and roll. Thank you. Riley, it's quicker ball this time for Harlequins and Pocock. Defence is winning the day so far. The two teams who've scored plenty of points this season. No hands now, three, thank you. Harlequin is scoring 674 points in the regular season. Was at 5-3-4. Harlequin's conceding nearly 300 points, 289. Was a lot lower on that particular chart with 254, so... Uh, Wasp defence has been good for the majority of the season and fine form coming into these playoffs as well with four wins on the trot, would it? The USA International played sevens as well. Here's Older. Down. Up against Burford. She meant that, didn't she, Rachel Burford? Yeah, she, you certainly know when you've been uh, tackled by by Rachel Burford, that's for sure. Very strong, uh, both in attack and defence. Well, Harlequins finished second in the regular season to Saracens. Just three points behind them. Was seven points. No drift of Harlequins. 15 wins for Harlequins, same as Saracens, but uh, lost three, whereas Saracens lost two uh, and drew one. They both beat each other in the regular season. Final round, in fact, is Harlequins beating Saracens. As two were just talking about now, sets up the drive and they have this ability. We saw that double pump of tries at the beginning. Don't join in three. Yeah. That's yeah, now very difficult last, for, last, um, uh, for Wasps to, to defend. Uh, you can available, see them getting off. good forward. Just, uh, Justine Lucas did um, very well there to, to get in line. there and, and just slow it down. Edwards. Outside one. Both sides have gone a little bit wide earlier on in this game as we're uh, moving up to the 16-minute mark. Catlin. Hands off now, three. Ball's there. Time to run. Green to Pocock, superb Typhoon Avenue last week, really <laughs> was the 13. You said uh, earlier on to me before we came on air that uh, 
Getting back to somewhere near her best. Yeah, absolutely. She's obviously been one of these players that have been unfortunate through um, injuries through her, her career and um, this season towards the, the latter part. We've really seen her come back to come back to where she, she was with that attacking pace and the lines that she can cut and defensively um, really sound as well. So it's great to see from a player like Fee Pocock. Crouch! Find. Of course, the injuries all started Set. here in this uh, corner down to our left-hand side of the 2010 World Cup. I mean, smash to me, knee is, is an understatement. Down, beautiful pass from Jackson, just floated over the top, knew the pace was going to be there, and now it's a full race. And Wooden showing some good pace, but she's taking it back over her own try line. She will have to clear the lines here, though, is it? Would have been a scrub. It'll be really interesting now to see um, how Quinns handle the pressure in their own 22. This is the first time they've been there. Obviously, they've been parked down in um, Wasps 22 and just probably haven't built the pressure and built the phases and um, been clinical to, to get some points on the board. So it'll be really interesting to see now how roles are reversed. Pressure on Wash on that, that line out. Turned the screw in that pressure situation. A really good scoring opportunity, and they've knocked it on in the line out. Yeah, both teams following a similar suit. Quinns have pressure in the in the Wasp 22, and they're making a few errors. And similarly with with Wasps up here, it'll be really interesting because both teams will have done their homework and playing over two legs. You really get to understand uh, the the opposition you're playing for, so they'll know each other inside out. Riley and Catlin with the quick strike. Burford rather sliding into the uh, the contact. Oh, trying the rocks kick. It's not really what she's known for. She's a high tempo scrum half. The quick tap penalties. We saw that one of the tries in the first leg. Tried the box kick. And it's been uh, been charged down. 13 or 14? I think it's Fee Pocock who's just going to go off for some running repairs. Known as commentator's curse, isn't it? Yeah, back to a best, injury free. Oh, she's going off. Let, let's just hope she's going out to get uh, some running repairs and we might see her back on the pitch. That doesn't look great though, does it, with the uh, the bib being handed? Yeah, Stacey White. Uh, Crouch! There's lots of forms of rugby, Set. rugby league included. At the, uh, the World Cup in Australia. Sammy Wong. Dow with a huge blind side to work with, but no Harlequins, Shauna Brown, very, very quick off the mark. Leanne Riley was there as well. Sammy Wong has got it quickly, but she's called back. Called back very, very quickly by uh, referee Wood. Six. I must see a clear release and from the back foot. Well, Sotin to go for the scrum. Yeah, they, they've had some some success with their line out, but the scrum there looked dominant. Uh, you've obviously got a very strong front row in Justine Lucas, Emmy Kane, and Claire Purdy, and and Amy's really Rose. knows when when to Fine. get the ball in. So you'll Set. see a foot come up when the when the scrum's steady, and so just there, as you see, a, a foot comes up, and that's when she wants the ball in. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> unfortunately, Wasps and um, Quinns have attacked that um, and come away with the ball. Perhaps we should just both stop talking. Because <laughs> we're cursing help. everything, aren't we, at the moment? <laughs> yeah, it might help. It might help them. Well, I'm here. It was an incredible scrum, wasn't it, from uh, from Harlequins? 
Yeah, yeah it was. And for me, that just shows that it's about concentration because um, that shows that they can do it. And it's about making sure that every set piece, every scrum, that that they actually do what, stick to the process and actually come through like that. Because if they can compete like that once, you can do it and make sure you shore it up. Because the scrum before, Wasps looked dominant. So I think for them, Abby Scott will probably be speaking to them about, about that because that's probably something that's happening across the, across the whole game there. Wrong to Older standing in at first receiver. Roll, roll away eight. Without Rocky Clark, of course, how with a uh, thumb injury in the last round of uh, the regular season. Harriet Millen Mills as well. It, it's worth mentioning that that second right call injury that's kept out the majority of the season. She would be a, uh, a superb customer to have uh, in that second row the back row for Wasps. Yeah, she was in great form um, at the start of the season before her injury, and it's really good. I think she's water carrier here today, so it's really good to see that she's she's back up and, and running in. And the same with with Rocky Clark. She's she's been in great form all season. Um, so it's a shame that she misses out right at the the very end um, when when it all counts really. The fear factor of young props coming through the ranks is driving Rocky Clark on one of them. Right on cue, Victoria Cornbra. Yeah, it seems every time Vicky Cornbra gets her hands on the ball at the minute, she's she's taken about three or four people to stop her and get make them really good ground. Burford is going back the long way, no back going. into the heavy traffic. Catlin. Riley again, <laughs> uses Sean Brown as a block, but uh, completely illegally. GS not uh, quite on the same hymn sheet there, the uh, Harlequins 9 and, and Blindside. Just no, no rhythm at the moment to, to either side. No, uh, neither side being able to, to keep the ball long enough to, to impose their style of play, whether it be the, the quick tempo of Harlequins. Just making too many individual errors, and it was an error that uh, when I spoke to Giselle Mather this week, it was the individual error count that uh, they were looking to improve today, uh, amongst other things. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what semi-final rugby is probably about. Who can the quickest get into their rhythm and find that uh, their, their flow of the game and really stamp their marker on it? Um, you see there, Abby Dow again missed, missed touch for, for Wasps to get another opportunity to attack from and they're straight back on the defence. Ellie Green. Bouncing right from the 22, that cruel bounce of the rugby ball. Burford went up with the hands. Because she looks at that one again, she'll uh, be happy the way she attempted to catch that one. There was plenty of Harlequins players around. Possibly one of those just to, to let it go. Water under pressure, it's right on their 22. Waterman hasn't got there. Just let, just, just let Wash deal with it and, 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 and take the tackle. So it's been a ding dong battle at scrum time so far. Yep. Nick Smith comes away. One of those players, along with the likes of Sheffield and Alder, Craig as well, really benefiting from the the professional outlook that these uh, these amateur clubs have. You know, the strength of conditioning, the analysis, all that extra work that was going into uh, English women's club game. Yeah, we often talk about the international players that make up uh, the club teams, but I think it's more important that we're improving the, the club player that doesn't go away on international duty because they're the consistent throughout the year. And, and there you see uh, Nicole Smith and Liz Craig for, for WASPs they're not known back row players out there, but actually they've done really well for, for Wasp this year. They did really well last week. They carried hard, got their, their team on the front foot, foot and we've, see, we've seen that from Nicole Smith there when, when the scrum's been under a bit of pressure, getting some go forward um, and creating a platform uh, to play it off. Just raising the bar, of course, you ladies and I set with you you hear blushing away but uh, the uh, the England international side of course have set new levels 
really from the days when we had the professional contracts and who knows there's a few murmurings around the place so that may be on its way back and let's let's hope uh, it is with the uh, sort of semi-contracts being handed out in New Zealand, France, moving towards that way as well, whether the RFU and English rugby will move that way as well, but raise the international level. But the, the Tyrrells Premiership, Premier 15s, is just raising the level across the board, as you say. Yeah, absolutely. And I think not just at senior level, but we've seen our under-20s team done fantastically this way, winning for against France for the first time in a long time. And that's because they're exposed to TP15s week in, week out and playing senior level rugby and high quality rugby, which I think is really having an impact. There's a high quality pass to Bradshaw from Burford. Really was. If Bradshaw had to falter on the pass, she had not got round initially the outside of Abby Down. It's Rianne Riley who takes it quickly and then here come the power now the Harlequins forwards were going back for the penalty. Burford there. What do you do here, Skips? I'd go for the corner. Their, their last line-out drive was, was very strong. It's five metres out. With the strength that they've got in, in that pack, that's what I'd be asking um, them to do. Well, Sam Hilton is holding up three fingers in the stand, no doubt. <laughs> It's a long way out, isn't it? It's a very wide kick, despite uh, Ellie Green at 86%, 41 points in only uh, four games. Got to get the line out right first. See, so should have gone for the three points. Yeah, I used to say that actually Wasps stayed down there, so they had no competition in the air. So actually, when, when the team's not defending and competing at the line out, really it's just about backing your, your skills, the, the quality of the lift, jump, and throw in. Um, Quinns will probably be kicking themselves an opportunity there. Really good opportunity, wasn't it? Above the green, though, because it's. Uh, Wasps have knocked it on Harlequin scrub. Much steadier from the Quinns eight this time. Fletcher. Been told to use it now with Leanne Wright, who falls over. Free Fletcher sees that and spins around the tackle of one. Paid for a target, the MPC in New Zealand, Sammy Wong. Massive heart, not such a, a big frame, the, the scrum half. Riley, Green, Burford, wider to Wooden. Myers was there, but it's Stacey White now. Using her physicality, but what great defence of them throughout this opening part of this game, this second leg of the semi-finals of the TP. Tyrrell's Premier 15's semi-final. Good quick hands. What defence and what's, but in the end, Harlequins are over. And it's Stacey White who gets the first score. 11 points the difference now. On the aggregate score. Yeah, it just shows when you build some phases, you're a little bit more patient, a little bit more composed and, and don't try and force matters, then actually you, you have more of a chance of scoring. Jess Wooden did really well there to keep the ball in and, and make sure she didn't go into touch. You no, know, just that composure and knowing that she had a player on the inside who would be in a better position than she would do to try and go for the try. And she's surprised at the quality of tackle on her, wasn't she? She thought she was uh, going in the corner, Jess Wooden, but uh, just uh, some superb defence from Wasp. But in the end, the numbers told it was just wave after wave for, for Harlequins. And Stacey White from short range, very powerful. Eddie Green. Spent some time this week with Marcus Smith and Nick Evans at Harlequins. Nice strike of the ball just uh, across the face of the post. What a wonderful opportunity for her to spend some time with the, uh, the All Black and Harlequins. Great Nick Evans and of course the uh, England apprentice Marcus Smith as well. 
But that's very much the Harlequins' way, isn't it, dude? The women's set has been totally and utterly integrated into the men's set. I don't know Dave Ellis, the CEO, has put a picture up of a full Twickenham stoop and said, right, well, this needs to be a women's game, not just a men's game. And that's the vision of Harlequins, and they are, to be fair, leading the way in that. Yeah, they've done a fantastic job. I mean, they were the first team to sort of welcome England Roses into into their home and sort of set this example of like, well, we want to make uh, women's rugby part of uh, everything that we do here at Harlequins, and they've certainly done that this year. Yeah, all the posters have the England internationals. It's not just Rob Short and Brown. It's Burford in there as well, McCormack as well. Look at the confidence now, though, of Harlequins. They've scored that try, and now the offloads are sticking, and they're giving options to the ball carriers. Yeah, this is what we've seen um, Harlequins do all season, and it almost seems like they needed that first try to, to settle them down and to allow things to, to just really start to click for them. Um, it's really important now for, for Wasps to, to not let Harlequins run, a, run away with it. You know, we've seen them defend fantastically well up until this point, and the worst thing that they can do is now think, oh, we're, we're 11 points down, we have to force things. There's still a lot of rugby to be played, and they just need to stay patient, play in the right areas, and, and get themselves back in, in this two-legged game. It's wise words. You should... Um Perhaps skip her a side or two. Perhaps some coaching. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. Uh, going back to the conversation I had with Giselle made uh, in the week. Uh, still the game, of course, with, with just a six-point difference between the two teams and plenty of chances that was created and areas of the game which they felt they could tighten up and wouldn't be too far away. And some of the younger girls talked to, uh, to Nali Waterman the Sky Sports coverage of the, the championship game down at Bristol last night. So, a couple of the youngsters really annoyed. Oh, we could have won that game. And, you know, there was, a, there was a, a real annoyance in the squad. But, as you say, from this position, 11 point difference, Quinns get the next score. Then they're looking up a, a, a mountain, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, it's always difficult if it, if it starts to go away. But Wasps showed last week, you know, that they got a try early on, but then they, they conceded three quick tries. And some teams, that would be enough to, to write off the game. But, but Wasps came right back into it and even took the lead in that game. So they just need to remember that. Even if, even if um, Quinns get another try, you know what? Stick to what they did last week and keep building and keep chipping away at the, the scoreboard. Um, and hopefully find themselves still in the game right at the end when it matters, really. And when you've got the likes of Nolly Water, when you've got the likes of, of Abby Dow, Tova Dirk out there as well, the back three is I mean, serious wheels, serious talent, serious try-scoring ability. You're never far out of the game. Both line-outs not going... Yeah, you see them go to the front there. Nice, simple ball. Um, that will hopefully get their, get their drive going forward. So not to 100% so far for both sides. But McCormack doing well. Just sort of blocker within that line. Stacey White, hard angle from her. We've already seen her power in scoring that try. Leanne Riley. Burford. Riley again, Abby Scott. Oh. Good decision there. You saw her try to go for that out the back door, but again, they've probably just forced things a little bit too much early on and a really smart decision by Abby to go, do you know what, just set it up and we'll keep the phases, keep playing and build the pressure, which we, we've seen them now, now going to do. And they're building the rhythm as well here, Harlequins, aren't they? Those passes sticking and beginning to get some, some big runners off, so, some of the uh, slightly wider players, Cormor goes through Brown leaves it oh does she slowed right down out Green waits Burford fizzes one out to Woodham the Dirk has done her best but can't do anything about the referee and the assistant referee giving the try. Superb build-up from Harlequins. You could see it coming. And then 
the moment of class from Rachel Burford. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you see the pass from Rachel. She, this is what she's renowned for. That, that sharp flat pass straight across the defenders. Beat, beats about three defenders there to, to give Harlequins that opportunity score. But it all comes from um, that opportunity to, to go to the corner to retain their line out set piece from that drive and create a platform to, to play off and then like I said just go through those phases that decision probably by Abby Scott of whether to give the ball or whether to hang on just allows them to keep that pressure and just moving it from one edge to the other Wasps have to defend really hard when you start moving it from one edge to the other edge um, and then hopefully that means that it'll create some space out on out, out wide which with someone like Rachel Burford in the centre there can really um, utilise that. Yeah, you see that try again. See that try again after this kick. Green tried to pull it around, just didn't have the distance this time. It's a big lead now for Harlequins. You can just hear Rachel Burford talking to the girls about keep that, stick with the processes. Really geeing up her team to keep on top of where they're at now. Watch that left wrist. Just knew she needed to just fizz the pass flat, bang across the defence. I mean, she has built her game. And as I said during the team lists, she is just exceptional quality every time she pulls on a rugby shirt, whether that be in the quarters of Harlequins or with a red rose. She's just so consistent in what she does, so reliable as a player so and a teammate. <laughs> but you just know what you're going to get with her every time, if that's an attack or defence. Um, a real, real solid player to have in your team. There's been a change and uh, a change that uh, we half expected. Hannah Edwards, we spoke about her at the very beginning, over 140 caps for the club. Her, her ninth season at WAS is on at 10. Louise Dodd, who got a knock playing for the Army this week. So be it. That was a great turnover scrum there from um, Harlequins. It's really now put the pressure right back on, on Wasps, having been in a real good opportunity to, to get back in the game and get some points. One. Not quite who it was, apart from the footwork, and that's unmistakably only Waterman. The aggressive handoff. Yeah. Had that in your face a couple of times in training? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. In training, on the opposition. Certainly someone I... Celebrating I, a game. Yeah. <laughs> throws C it out wherever she likes. Certainly someone I'd rather be playing with than against, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think she's just all about speed and, and the feet. And then the big fend comes off. I just feel that if Wasps are going to get back into this game, she needs to be getting on the ball more. They need to find a way to get the ball to her. Um, just seems to be a little bit narrow at the minute. Made that point, didn't we? Ball's coming straight out of the, uh, the tunnel, so we will reset. We made that point, didn't we? That we want to get the, the ball in the likes of every doubt. Dirk as well, and you say Nolly Wharton in her hands a little bit more. Harlequin's being a little bit uh, selfish with the ball at the moment. And they've got the distributors out there. You know, Jackson, a very good pass with the ball, of course, and now Hannah Edwards has come on. It's interesting, Nolly's just gone to stand in in that sort of 13 channel, so whether they're trying to move her in a little bit closer so she can get her hands on the ball a little bit earlier. Hold up, a little bit too much on the pass. Nick Smith is there though. The dustpan and brush just to tidy things up. Purdy, servant, she's been to was. Players play it three times, and that is some feat for a front rower. Certainly a prop. Wouldn't. 
Try score already, Bradshaw. Try score last week. They're holding on though, Harlequins. Justin Lucas is right there. Yeah, Justine Lucas does that really well. Um, she gets into the contact area really quickly and just gets herself past the ball and in a really good, strong position. That means it's really difficult for, for the attacking support players to move on. We can see that she's won her, won her team uh, the, the turnover to put them into an opportunity to, to try and get themselves back into this game. Yeah, it's great to see her back involved in the international fold during the Six Nations, missed the, uh, the autumn campaign with, a, with an ankle injury. So I think we're like right question marks over the uh, the England scrum. It's going to move away from you so you don't hit me. And there are a few question marks over the England England scrum in the autumn against Canada, despite whitewashing the uh, the Canadians. And a couple of tight heads out, of course. So problem solved in the Six Nations. And Justin Lucas, good to see her back on the field. There's Waterman Edwards folks one over to Jackson. Duck tried to go on the outside. You can see what she was trying to do. It's excellent defense, it really is. From well, Jessica Wooden and Stacey White. Stacey White, one of those try scorers in the uh, the first half. And it uh, is the end of the uh, the first half. Nick Wood blowing his whistle. And that is half time. Slight confusion. We had a few minutes left on our clock here, and uh, the stadium announcer as well. It's come a bit of a surprise to us all, but uh, there's no surprise at the moment. Uh, the team well in front, and that is Harlequins ladies. They have a 10 0 lead at half time, and on the aggregate, 35 points to 19 over Wash. And Wash have it all to do in that second half. Yeah, Wasps got themselves into a really good position. Uh, they, their line-out was really good. They got their drive going. Um, Quinns did well to, to defend it, but probably just needed to stay a little bit more patient and just stay in the, the Quinns 22 for a little bit longer. Maybe make Quinns force an error. Just keep ball, keep playing through the phases. Um, yes, you want to go wide, but you've got to earn that right to go wide as well. Well, it's not just the Tills Premier 15s and uh, the investment from the RFU that's growing the women's game in England. Of course, they've uh, initiated a superb campaign, the era, you know, warrior camps. Here's Katie McLean. They've come down to the Inner Warrior Camp and it's just amazing, it's a really good opportunity for women to get into rugby who maybe have never experienced it and just come out and give it a go. It's all about trying rugby for the first time if you've never done it before and kind of being more involved with rugby if you're new to it or only want to try it and taste it basically. I loved it, it was great. Um, I think one of the best things about like trying something new is that you like, go into it not knowing what you're going to expect. I thought I would be terrified of tackling, but actually it was all right. Yeah, I think I had more of a laugh doing this than I have had on like, any treadmill, so. <laughs> what the really lovely thing for me to see is that how nice they include the girls that haven't played rugby before. They've been really friendly, they're really warm, and it, it's just a really lovely environment for us as kind of elite players to see what goes on in the grassroots part of the game. They were so helpful and like encouraging, getting you started and making sure you like felt comfortable in what you were doing and having fun all the time. It's just so much fun and like the, the team spirit that the girls have is so incredible and I think you'll get that on any in a warrior day. There's nothing better than when you look at into your players' faces and you can see the big smiles, you see them enjoying themselves, you're seeing them having loads of fun, meeting new people and trying something new for the first time. I think if you're thinking about it, go down, get involved. It's a really good opportunity for you to come and get active. There's loads of camps going on throughout April. And just to come and meet new friends, you know, the sun should be shining and it'd be nice for you to get out and, and be active. Yes, free your inner warrior. Any more information and there's a whole new batch of 
of camps in April. It's a superb initiative from the RFU. Go to www.englandrugby.com forward slash in a warrior it is a superb program sarah hunter that you've uh, been heavily involved with yeah absolutely it's a great initiative to to try and get new people into into rugby uh, giving them the chance to experience the game that we love so much or maybe if they've played it and fallen away from it, it gives them another opportunity to to get involved and just see what it's all about and, and enjoy getting into doing some activity whether it's something that you just take part in once or you end up carrying on and joining a rugby club it, it's just a fantastic um, opportunity to, for people to try something new and what earth would you want to play the greatest team game on the planet exactly and and I, I think everyone that has been involved in rugby whether they played at club level whether they've gone on to international um, opportunities and honours will say the same thing that it's such a fantastic sport to be involved but the camaraderie you have with teammates, the, the fun aspect, the social aspect, and I think more importantly maybe for younger people um, starting out, just the social development that it aids you as a person and, and shapes you, that, that the respect and the values that rugby has is, there's, for me, in my opinion, there's no other sport out there like it. For the first time today, we agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, superb sport and... Uh, so many life skills as well but uh, let's turn our attention back to that that first 40 minutes uh, Sarah and uh, it was really edgy wasn't it to begin with and it was it was tentative and neither side could keep hold of the ball long enough to uh, to get any rhythm to their play but uh, it was Harlequins who who got the first score on the board yeah, we, we just saw um, the teams probably trying to, to force things too much, but when Harlequins got their, their hands on the ball and got a good platform to, to play off in and then unleashed their, their backs with their skill set and just stayed a bit more patient and put pressure on Wasta, they've got their two tries that have probably just eased them into the second half. Here was that first try from Stacey White. And that was shortly followed, wasn't it? You could see the confidence oozing through the Harlequins players after that first try. And it was a, it was a good patient build-up, wouldn't it, who gave the assist this time with the dot down. Yeah, and uh, Rachel Burford's been key to both of those tries. Um, you can see the quality of her pass that has, has got the ball out wide quickly, beating two, three defenders, and then it just makes it really difficult for a defence to, to get across and, and make that, that final tackle on, on the edge player. So, of course, today, and, and we make uh, no apologies for doing it, it's all about the aggregate score, of course. With two leg games, which, uh, which is new and novel, to the women's game, to the women's uh, league game. It's all about that aggregate score at the moment. 35-19 to Harlequins. Yes, they let a, a lead slip last week. Can you see them doing it in the second half? I think Quinns have probably got just too much experience out there um, to, to let it slip away. I think Wasps have obviously got dangerous players and, and I think they will come back into the game, but you look through through the, the the team that Quinns have got with Vicky Cornborough, Abby Scott, Shauna Brown, Debs McCormack, um, Leanne Riley, Rachel Burford. That, I just think they've got a little bit too much firepower and just a little bit too much experience to, to let it slip away, um, which I think is what's going to be needed. We talked about if they, if they can get into their style of play, cut their errors and their, their discipline out then uh, that they're, they'll probably get an upper hand and we saw probably the last 10-15 minutes Harlequins really come into their own and and was probably again we spoke about it before um, the game they probably just need to shore up that set piece um, their scrum has probably been a bit inconsistent at times you think it's going to be a solid platform to play off but then they get pushed backwards um, line out has been a bit inconsistent and we saw from both uh, the tries from uh, Harlequins is that it came from a good solid set piece. So Wasp really needing to score first in this second half. This of course being streamed on the uh, on England Rugby website. Here's what's coming up for you as well. We've uh, of course mid 
semi-final, we're sort of quarter of the way through these uh, second leg of these semi-finals today here at the Twickenham Stoop. Later on, we have that second semi-final for you between Saracens and Gloucester Hartbury. And then Hartbury College are involved um, next weekend, Sunday, 28th of April, against Bristol. Bristol crowned champions. There's a party atmosphere down at Ashton Gate last night for the Green King IPA Championship, Sunday, 28th for that one. And then the RFU Club Cup Finals for 2018 at Twickenham across the uh, the road here, Sunday the 6th of May. On Friday the 11th, the new fixtures for the England under 20 side against South Africa. That's from, uh, from Worcester six ways, half past seven. Uh, the RFU under 18's Cup Final, Saturday the 19th of May, again at six ways at Worcester, two o'clock for that one. And then the RFU County Championship Finals. Again, at the home of English rugby, the Cambridge Patch, Sunday the 27th of May. And looking a little bit further ahead, well, the 29th of April, 3 o'clock, the uh, Tyrrells Premier 15s, Vallis Waite and Ealing. Early bird tickets for that one, www.eticketing.co.uk forward slash RFU. And that is live on Sky Sports for you as well. And then it's England against the Barbarians. Tickets from uh, just £25 for a superb day of rugby. It always is the end of season bonanza. 27th of May, 3 o'clock for that one. And then the HSBC London Sevens, again at, uh, at Twickenham. Tickets from only £20, and it's been a fascinating series, the World Series. It really has been. That's on Saturday the 2nd and Sunday the 3rd of June. So get your tickets for that one. And there she is in the background, resplendent in the springtime sun as the groundsman just makes a, uh, a few adjustments to his hallowed turf at half-time here. Harlequins, of course, the reigning champions. They did the double last season, won the cup as well, and they're on for the double-double again here. And this is going to take some effort from Wass in this second half to, to pull back this 10-point lead just in this game. But, of course, the, uh, the overall aggregate score. What do Wass specifically have to do, Sarah, in this second half and early in this second half to get that first goal, which I, I think we, we both agree is a must for them. Yeah, it's really important that they, they come out and they come out with confidence um, and they just find a way to, to keep a hold of the ball. I just don't think we've seen them go through the phases enough and we haven't seen them play in the right areas. So when they've got into um, Quinn's 22, they've just lost possession in a little bit too easily and too early. And we haven't really seen Quinn's under pressure in defence at all really in this game so I think if I were, was in the wash dressing room I'd just be saying look it's it's not over 40 minutes is still a long time to play but we have to get ourselves into the game somewhere so play in the right areas keep a hold of, of the ball um, be patient with it and really try and put uh, Harlequins under under pressure and I really think they need to try and be looking to get the ball out into out into their back three. Yeah, the conversation with Giselle Mather this week, the uh, the was head coach saying she wanted a performance that they could be proud of. And if they get beat by a better team on the day, they get beat by a better team on the day, or or, or over the two legs. No problem at all, but she just wanted them to go out and express themselves in a waspy way. She said it's, it's waspy weather, which obviously intimates that uh, it's all about the uh, giving the ball some air, giving the, the, the chances to, to their back three, as, as you've discussed. But we haven't seen that at the moment, and the, and the errors, they've just relieved pressure, haven't they, for, for Harlequins. You remember Harlequins being down on there. They're 22, close to their own line. Was come up with a mistake, it relieves the pressure for Harlequins. They just haven't been able to, to keep hold of the ball, whether that be through set piece or individual error at the moment, to get that rhythm, to get those back three players into the game. Yeah, and we have seen some uh, really good attacks from Wasps. They, they have broken 
Quinn's um, defensive line in the in the midfield. But what they haven't then done is, is back that up. So they they they've made a line break. Uh, but then they haven't looked after the ball following that to really assert themselves and put pressure on the Harlequins' defence. So we know it's we know they're capable of, of breaking the line, um, creating problems for, for Harlequins. But as we said, that they just need to then make sure they they look after the ball so they can really have some time in attack. Because having probably um, defended for most of the game. There, They've, they've stayed solid um, and they just need to go back to their processes um, that they, they do week in, week out in training uh, and just probably look after that ball a, a little bit better. You know, and they went away from that last week eh? and it was nerves and, it, and it's a young squad and, and, they, and they're pulling together. I mean, Giselle made a, a compliments flying around. I had a, a quick word with, uh, with Tony Diprose, who's uh, a really big cheese here at Harlequins now. I mean, he's, he eats a lot of cheese, but uh, he is a big cheese as well. Uh, and, and he was saying, complimenting Giselle Mather just completely straight off, straight off the bat. So, she is hugely, hugely regarded in, in the women's game. And she just needs to instill that confidence in her players. I mean, you think about last season, they finished seventh in the Premiership. The year before that, Six year before that, six seventh, they're now up in third, and they challenge Harlequins, the reigning champions, really pushing them all the way. Yeah, absolutely. If anyone can get confidence in this side, it's it's Giselle. Um, she's done a fantastic job for 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 Wasp this year, and like you say, from where they were last season to to where they are now, and probably really need to see the the the, the players within. Uh, that group step up. So you're looking for your Danielle Waterman's, your your Amy Kakane's, your Justine Lucas's to to really like show their credentials of their experience now to to bring the rest of the girls along with them. She is a fabulous communicator, as well, made it. One of the successful coaches in the British Isles, first female to do a level four coaching badge. You can only see one way for what, irrespective of what happens here today, that curve is only going upwards at Twyford Avenue. Yeah, absolutely. Just to, to, to get to the, the playoffs in, in their first year, having been where they have done in previous seasons is a fantastic uh, achievement. And I, I know Giselle Mayer, they won't settle for, for this and the girls won't. Like, they'll want to keep pushing on and they've got 40 minutes here to, to turn this um, semi-final around and really give themselves the best shot of, of trying to get to that final. But also, as Giselle Mayer has said, to make the team proud of what they've done here today. And speaking of good coaching setups, Harlequins have at themselves on the Gary Street. World Cup winning coach with England, of course. Karen Friendly. Numerous titles in English club rugby. Second half underway, the second leg of the semi-final. Harlequins with a decent lead. Emily Maisie is a change at half-time for Wasps. Alice Sheffield has made way for Emily Maisy. Purdy. Okay, now that short side. <laughs> Playing the advantage for the high tackle. I also feel uh, as well with Wasp, got to find a way of playing rugby in the Quinn's territory. I mean, yes, we've spoken about the back three, and they are a dazzling back three that can can score from anywhere on a rugby field. But they are up against, you know, the reigning champions against a, a defence which is very, very good. Just to get a little bit more territory, just to just to build that pressure. Of course, rugby at this level is about pressure. Yeah, absolutely. And you could see there they, they did try to, to get that kick and play play down in uh, Quinn's half. But 
kicking is all about kicking on your terms um, and kicking when you're ready and not under pressure. And unfortunately, probably was probably a little bit too early in, in the phase play that just allowed Queens to charge it down um, and, and put them back under pressure. But they, they've got the penalty. They've given themselves an option. Um, and unfortunately, it looks like it hasn't gone five um, in the, the line out. Oh, it's a coach killer. One of those mistakes as a coach, just really, and, and again, that's what we were talking about at half time, wasn't it? They put themselves in a position, and it's a, uh, so it's unforced error because you're in a semi final, of course, but just take the pressure off when you've got some possession, you've got the line out throw, and Corbro and Brown just making inroads now, serious inroads into that Wasp defensive line. Yeah, Cornbrook carried fantastically Hasn't all day she? today. Like, oh. She's made meters every time she's got her, her hands on the ball in. Not only that, dragging two, three defenders in. Myers. Nice. The Dubai national seven team. She's uh, also represented England A. It's the, uh, the Maple Leafs uh, a few years ago now. Qualified netball coach. So she's uh, good with the round ball as well. Leanne Riley's, look at that ball, it's on a plate for her at the moment, isn't it? And it's quick as well, and that's what she wants, that's what Harlequins want. White. Little seatbelt tackled by Older. Edwards. Did well, needed a second bite of the cherry. And then it's Brown again into Purdy. And into Craig. Green. To Burford. Brilliant kick for Myers. Just didn't sit up on that third bounce for Myers. Harlequins have got um, some really strong big ball carriers. And I feel like Wasps just need to go a little bit low in their, their tackles. They're, they're making the tackles, but they're, they're soaking up. And the, the Quinns player is just getting that gain line advantage which means that wasps are continually on the back foot so they just need to go a little bit low chop them down allow wasps to set their their line speed and and put pressure onto onto quins and their attack amy cocaine 41 caps to an end 36 of those consecutively there you go you see abby scott get her hands on to, to that ball in and turn the turn it over and quins straight back into the attack there Mirror image of last week, Harlequins disrupting the Wasps line out, and then it's Brown and Cornbra. These two early in the second half with some very powerful carries indeed. Now it's P. Fletcher. Harlequins building again here. See the back's wooden, he's jumping around, wanting that ball, but it's gone to the right hand side with Chloe Edwards. Craig is there trying to turn that ball over for Wasp, but it's Riley. McCormack! Stretching, scoring. Said how important the first score of the second half was, and it goes to the reigning champions. Yeah, the try really came from that that turnover line out by Abby Scott, um, which allowed uh, Quinns to have some real good turnover attacking ball in, especially when Wasps are lined up to, to attack from. It's really hard to then turn that attack into defence when you've got a team like Quinn's coming straight after you. And it was just wave after wave, wasn't it? A, a, a big, powerful run as Sean of Brown. We've spoken about and a Cornbra as well. Commercial deep sea diver, Sean of Brown. Competes in the Highland Games. GB Athletics, discus shot. Put and hammer, got a silver at the Commonwealth Games. And now she's a firefighter as well. Firefighter, yep, that's on the list. Boxer, Sean of the Hammer Brown. No end to her talents. So oh, give rugby a go. Couple of caps already. Yeah, it's pretty average. Standard. <laughs> Green. She gets one. Been striking well all day. 
not got quite the direction on the first conversion attempt and not the legs in the second but third time lucky for Ellie Green she converts one and we are up to 17 nil 42 19 on the aggregate and we're only six and a half minutes into this second half Something needs to happen for us here and happen very quickly, you feel? Yeah, I think that Harlequins have obviously come out after half time with a bit between their teeth to, to really carry on the way they started, the, finished the first half, sorry. Um, and this could be Wasp's opportunity, you know. Penalty, put them in, the, in their own 22, Quinter's 22, and really attack from it. a big line out here in the, in the context of this game of, of this semi-final just feel that was have been under serious amounts of pressure mainly in the form of abby scott who and this is a, a massive compliment she will know that she is a complete line out norse spends a lot of time in the analysis of line outs she's no, disrupted she again yeah having uh having, sharing a room with her at england i know she um loves a line out and to talk about a line out oh, the, the winter nights must just fly by <laughs> see there again can't get your own set piece you're gonna have issues and that's harlequins kicking and then following up the kick which means that lolly waterman doesn't have much room and they'll have to reset here was will just be patient that was smith Fletcher's in the way. There's no need to do that. Number eight has uh, got so much experience. She's round the side, clearly offside, and penalty again, Wasps. Yeah, just in a, in a critical area, you, you probably just want to cut your um, errors out in discipline as well. You just need to, when you get towards your 22, you just need to be squeaky clean. You just need to be thinking, is this worth the risk or not? On the Premiership uh, with Richmond. Club just down the road here in 2016. There's plenty of those players who, of course, came across from Richmond to join the Elsford Bulls as they were there, joined with Harlequins. There's plenty of players who, who won Premiership titles. We've spoken about that experience. You've spoken about it at half time, of course, the England internationals, but players who've been in these pressure cooker situations before. Free Fletcher is, is one of those, and it's a surprise why she gave that penalty away. Yeah, absolutely. Majority of the the Quinns players were there and round about them. They're winning a semi final last year. They know how to win. They know how to get to finals, and then they know how to win when they get to finals. And that experience all all counts. And sometimes players do have uh, moments of madness and uh, maybe forget where they are. Especially back row, we're renowned for it. No, I totally disagree. You say I've never seen you have a moment of madness. Probably commentating on you a good. Eight, nine years now. Fresh face debut. That's showing my age. That is. Thanks, Johnny. Right. Haven't changed a bit. <coughs> and Fletcher now making up for the, giving that penalty away. Driving down that blind side for Harlequins. Just edging forward. Is that outside the 22? Won't matter because they're going to use Cornbra through the midfield. Stacey White is outside, just stopped on the pass momentarily. She's a strong runner, isn't she? Stacey White. And then Cornbra with the 1 2 and then McCormack. Great pick up. It's a long way down. The Debs McCormack floated out. Bradshaw. Dummy. Abby Dow is there. Off to Burford with a fend. Older. Brilliant tackle from the Wolves captain on the Harlequins captain. Edwards, McCormack, she's only just scored. Good tackle again from Wasps. Could be the game here. Could be a place in the final here. That's how big these moments are. Shauna Brown, Riley, Green here lining up outside. Who will score it? It's Jess Wooden. That's surely now. It's Harlequin back in the final. Yeah, and that was a fantastic try. I mean, 
the, the break came from uh, Vicky, Cor Vicky, Vicky Cornbra, I mean, um, and we've seen her do that all day, and she's the epitome of a, a modern day prop. Her set piece is fantastic with her, with her scrum and line out, but her all round ball playing game to make line breaks like that, we, we see her do that so regularly throughout the season. Another one of those who came from Richmond, started a career down in Plymouth where her, her dad used to play. She was uh, asked to play tight head, wasn't she, with the, the injuries to uh, Justin Lucas and Laura Keats. Yeah, and she did a fantastic job at that, which just shows you um, how talented she is, but also what she's willing to do for the team. I mean... There's a, there's a very, very big difference between loose head and tight head, and it's not just a case of them, them being props. They're very specialist in their own way, so she had to, to learn to spend extra time to make sure she could be an international tight head. Now, just knocking on the 40 cat mark, Vicky Cornbrook, but also Harlequins knocking on the door of the final. You just feel, from a, a neutral perspective, you want Was to play a few more shots. You want them to get hold of the ball a little bit more to make this a little bit more of a contest, because at the moment, 22-0. And, of course, with the, uh, the six-point lead from, from last week. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Wasps have really got anything to lose now. Um, so hopefully that might just make them relax a little bit more and and go into the rugby we've seen them play all season. And it's Harlequins, like uh, we saw in the first half, with the, some confidence of a, another try under their belts. Riley, Bradshaw, as you should as a winger, going away from the touchline. You'll be a friend with, with ball in hand. It's a slightly wild pass. Chloe Edwards couldn't take it short of Brown, does. She's tackled by Lucas. Green. Oh, she's human. Rachel Burford is human, everyone. She made a mistake. Yeah, that's quite a difficult pass to pick up on off your bootlaces. And you see Rachel do that time and time again. But unfortunately, it uh, just wasn't, wasn't the way that time. A hen's teeth moment. Yeah. Real rarity for Rachel Burford to, to make a mistake. But as you say, that pass is really dying on her. I mean, the nature of Rachel Burford is that and the, the level and the standards that she sets herself is that she would have probably expected to, to pick that up. But um, it was a very difficult pass for her to, to get. And they beat the place by 16, Kenny Afilaka and number 20, Megan Hallward. Adi Femmer, Mikey Lucker, coming on for uh, Claire Purdy. So just not having a drink or two before saying that name. Wong is caught by Leanne Riley. Megan Horwood on as well. That's for Nicole Smith in that back row. Turnover ball. High tackle though. Came from a high tackle, Rachel Burford. She knew the whistle had gone, just kicking that ball away. Go all the way back and again, Was here. Again, it, Abby Scott, a cormac who made a, a mess of the line out last week. They, they, done the same this week, not quite to such a, a great effect as last week, but it's in the back of the mind, isn't it, the captain? Do we go to touch? Do we hit the line out? You know, we're, we're, we're 50 metres out here. We, I mean, it's really the only option, isn't it, to... No. What do I know? We're going from 50 out. I mean... But that's why they've done it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it probably is. The, the, the set piece is just inconsistent at the minute. They... They have moments where they get it right and they have moments where it doesn't go their way, but they just need their hands on the ball. So, uh, as I say that, they, they've then turned it over. And the birth providers turn over. Oh, it was Rachel Burford. 
You see Paul in hand again, McCormack. Full of energy, isn't she? Great work rate for the uh, the Scotland international. Yeah, and she's actually playing out of position at, at seven. Um, she's normally in the second row, but the, the athletic ability and her mobility and her, her ball playing skills allows her to play out in the back row and just allows Queens to get all their best players on the on the pitch. Yeah, Amy Turner not involved. She's got a, a foot injury. She was doing a little bit of coaching on Thursday night. Waterman. Down. Again, the preciseness of the pass, just not there for Watt. And if Abby Dow takes that ball and it's out in front of her, I mean, she's racing away, isn't she, from that kind of range with that kind of space? Yeah, absolutely. She just has to check, which just means that she has to decelerate, allows the Quinn's defence to, to get across and just stops her from getting into full flow, which when we see Abby Dow does, not many people catch her. Shauna Brown rolling, commando rolling, using... All those multi-sports that she's uh, competed at such high levels at in that run just to gain an extra 10, 50 metres. She's been outstanding and it's Harlequins. He's given the ball away now. It's the intercept. Craig scored a beauty last week. Myers is chasing it down. It's Pocock and Waterman again. Craig sensibly comes back in field. Older is there, the Wasp captain, but Harlequins looking to turn it over. Is this the moment that Wasp score? Edwards, Lucas, for the moment the defensive line is not there for Harlequins and it's Hannah West on the blind side today, in the front row last week. Waterman trying to use those feet, back inside, but Trevine <laughs> held up says the referee. Held up, says the referee, and Giselle Maida is just down from us in a stand here. Very frustrated. They weren't able to get that ball over the line. But that's exactly what we want to see from, from Wasps. You know, they that line break by Craig, fantastic for, for a seven. Um, and they looked after the ball really well, which is the most important thing, key thing. When you're in the 22, Go through the phases, have a bit of composure, and it'll give you opportunities like that. But credit to Queen's defence for, for coming across. But, you know, Wasps are in the ascendancy at, at this moment in time, so hope that they, they can utilise, focus, and get their concentration in their set piece with their scrum and, and get a platform to, to play off. Change that's come half for Wasps. Sammy Watt has gone off the, uh, the New Zealander. Amy Atkinson wearing 22 has come on and her first duty will be to you say put the ball into the scrum but uh, so Nolly Waterman has gone in at scrum half this is where the experience of that throw really has to come to its own now they're in a really good um, position they just need to be really solid so they can get this ball to play away from Scrum is solid. Craig has shifted 2-8. McCormack looking to try and turn that ball over. Waterman out, scrum half. Nolly Waterman has played scrum half before. I think in her early days she, she was a nine. Absolutely. She does have some experience there at a decent level. I just... Who's I'm pulling out a face like a camel chewing a shirt, but it's you have her at nine, you lose her in that backfield. You know, fullback has the most time on the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Giselle May has obviously made that uh, tactical substitution for a reason, yep. uh, but you want to see Nolly out, Nolly Walkman out in um, space with time on on a hand, ball in the hand. Um, whether she can do that from scrum half, we'll, we'll see. We will see. Was forward. And the heat will take an effect. Sunny day. Warm, slight breeze. There is Waterman. Oh, she's going over. It's a genius tactical substitution from Giselle Mather. Just as we were saying, 
moving Nolly Waterman into scrum half. They can use those quick feet in and around the break, and they give themselves a lifeline, don't they? A chink of light for Wasps. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Nolly Waterman on the ball, wherever it is, is always a dangerous thing with uh, the footwork that, that she does have. And you needed a player like Nolly Waterman to, to step up, and you can hear her from up here really cheering on the, the rest of the girls, giving them energy to sort of say, come on, you know, like, we're, we're not out of this completely yet. Hannah Edwards with a conversion, nails it. Twenty-two points to seven. Forty-seven, twenty-six, twenty-one points. The difference. I think that's right. I ran out of fingers, but yeah. Sorry about Waterman not being in that backfield, but she hasn't been used much, and they've not had the. Uh, the possession, the continued possession to use Waterman in that position. So using it to come off, that's certainly what she will give you, those quick feet in and around the ruck. Forward. It certainly will please the likes of Ollie Bishop, Ross Boshier, Grant Hathaway, Adam Dowson, all in that coaching setup with Giselle May that we have done superb work with this team, getting them to the semi-finals and superb work from Walter and great from Craig in the build-up to that try and now the confidence here, Jackson, Vicky Jackson, that long stride of hers and the, and the long fend as well. Jackson again, nice footwork. Edwards, and got your distributors out there now, haven't they? Edwards and Jackson. Got the Nouse of Waterman at nine now, and this game, which has ebbed and flowed, is now firmly the way of Wasps as Lucas takes it on again. Yeah, Wasps look like they've got a bit of confidence now. We're seeing them start to play rugby that they, they've played all season. They're on the front foot, taking defenders on, uh, moving the ball wide. Looking for little offloads here and there. Duh. Tova Duh, the Swedish international. Played in that inaugural Barbarians game against Munster. Gone short side. It was Dow, wasn't it? And it initially for Wasp, and they're lining up in the midfield. Some, some of the bigger runners as well. Jackson. Bradshaw tries to get in there for Harlequins. Will it create some space out wide? Right idea from Jackson. Just wanted a winger out there rather than Craig, but Craig using what she has in her locker, which is strength, and she puts Wooden out, and it's superb positional play from Wooden again, who has uh, just gone about her business very, very quietly and efficiently, but it is the way of Wasp at the moment. Yeah, absolutely, and not a bad thing to, to turn uh, Quinn's defence round and put them on some pressure on, not off far from the try line to, to really see whether they, they can turn the screw in and get some more points on, on the board. But, I mean, the, the kick work was a good option to, to do, but uh, it's a bit cliche to say, but a kick is only as good as his chase, and we saw Craig there to to really put pressure on and, and make sure Wooden uh, didn't have an opportunity to, to counter-attack from and to put her into touch. Players just taking on some water. Lovely, lovely day, we keep saying, but it's just fabulous weather. And it's turning into a fabulous game, isn't it? Wasp just building in this second half. Is it too late, though? A big advantage that, uh, that Harlequins have. 47 points to 26 is your aggregate score in the yellow at the bottom of the score clock on the, uh, the right-hand side of your, of your picture. Today's score in the white, 22 points to seven. Pacing now, made up on this side. Can't quite see from uh, our coveted position.
Gary Street and Karen Finley. But he's not a pacer, Gary, is he? He's not a ranter and a raver. He'll be sat there calmly, coolly. But rather like last week, was coming back into this game. Same old story. Yeah, if it's not Abby Scott um, taking the, the line-up steal, then it's Deb McCormack. And you could see... By having two um, line-out options defending what actually just stop them from going to the front or going to the back, they, they have little option and, and where or makes it very difficult for, for Amy Kane to, to throw to. And you could see, I was going to say that, you could see Amy Kane's face as she put the ball into the line and Quinn's win it again. It, it is so hard, isn't it? You, you made the point, but it's a, I think it's a, it's a point worth making again. The, your international, England number two, your main line-out jumper is on the opposition, on the opposition club, and it makes it very, very tricky for the, for the hooker. You'd prefer to have the, the jumper rather than the hooker in your sight. And they've gone for the little short one, but it's not gone five again. Second time. Yeah, you almost get to line up time and <laughs> when it gets to this point and trying to find solutions and ways of just retaining the ball. Um, but yeah, you, if you go to if you go to that short option, you you do have to get it over over the five meter line. But there's no reason why the front jumper couldn't have come back. And then uh, they, they take take the line out, but beyond the five meter line. It was just poor execution that time. Right idea, they just want to get the ball back from line out. You, you can see that now, but again, it's it's the, the Achilles heel, isn't it, for what's the line out was last week and it's proving to be again today. Yeah, one of the things that they could do is, is potentially shorten it in, with the options, which we haven't seen them, them go to. Uh, just something different. Obviously the full man line out isn't working, the, the short one to the front isn't working. So why not mix it up and try and go for a short option, speed it up, there's less defenders in there to, to try and get to, although Abby Scott and Deb McCormick would be very good at defending that, but try something different, I think, at this stage. There's the double hat again, the coaches and the captain's hat, playing out from Sarah Hunter. Thirteen minutes left in this game. <laughs> on the floor, there's a hand in there. Says referee Nick Wood. And you think about where Wasp were. They're five metres away from the Harlequins lineout, weren't they? And we have two lineouts. Harlequins steal them and then give the penalty away. And we are. Now back into the Wasp half, and it's uh, it's it's a very very familiar story today from Wasp. Yeah, it certainly is, and I mean, when something uh, as your set piece as it isn't going right, it just creates that difficulty to to get a foot into the game, and a week is quite difficult to turn it round, especially with the experience that Harlequins have have got, um, and probably the ascendancy in the second row that they have. You see there, they throw straight to the back. Um, they don't seem to be having any problems, a special off the back with Vic Cornbra um, coming round the corner. It was a superb run, but it was a better, better play. I think it was uh, Megan Horwood. Older, three on two for a moment. Kate Older, half saw a gap, Burford. Just closing the door on her, just about. This is where Wasp will be dangerous in the second half. With ball in hand, there's Jackson. Another one who played for the Barbarians against Munster. Put down here, her nickname is Snow White. Right? <laughs> Having said that, I've got a Wasp nickname wrong before, apparently. Alice Sheffield. It's called uh, salad. Apparently, I called her lettuce, but I think that was Nolly Waterman who was pulling my leg on the touchline when I went to see them training earlier in the season. 
But having said that, salad's a much better nickname than lettuce is a much better nickname than salad. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that one there. <laughs> Cocaine, and there's the Brains Trust, and whether somebody's heard you or not, uh, Sarah, but they've shortened the line up. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a sensible option to do. Um, with 10 minutes left of the of the game, why not? Um, full man hasn't been working. Go to short line, see if this... Oh, so tough, that line-up. Right in front of us, the triggers of Amy Kikane, which is going to throw the ball. Abby Scott knows, like the back of her hat, as she should, as the main line-out jumper for England. Yeah, and she was just fractions away from it, but really good option by Wash to shorten it to, to four players. Takes It's really difficult to defend a, a four-man line-out like that, so um, right decision from Wash there to, to shorten it down. Oh, it's... It's taken them 70 minutes to do it, though. And if the same mistakes are being made as last week, perhaps it was a, an option that uh, they possibly could have tried it earlier in the game. And that's probably the difference between Harlequins and, and Wasps, is that Harlequins have line-out leaders such as Abby Scott, Deb McCormack, Fee Fletcher, that was um, calling for, for when um, they were away on international duty. But... Wasps probably haven't got the experience in their second row that they have and you're missing someone like Harriet Miller Mills who was calling and running their line out and as a as a Loughborough Lightning forwards coach at the start of the season they were was really strong in, in that area and losing key players like that um, really makes significant differences to what you can and can't do. Yeah that, that experience I asked uh, Karen Finley, didn't I? That experience, not only at international level, of course, with the likes of Cormer and Riley, Scott, we've mentioned there in the Cormac. But the club experience as well, having experienced these pressure situations in a club shirt. Yeah, it's, a, it's an impressive setup. A good blend, though. You, you look at the likes of 17-year-old teenager Ellie Green at 10. It's a, it's a really, really good blend. That the likes of Ian Shanahan, Ali Mortimer, and Graham Rod, alongside Finley and Street, are moulding very nicely. You know, it looks like they will be into that final, and barring a rugby miracle, up against Saracens, the two top teams, of course, who finished the league. There's Waterman stepping and using the. Uh, the elbows as well to get through. Jackson. Coming more and more into the game, Jackson. Atkinson. Older. Hannah Edwards, Lucas. There was space, just one out. Just that extra pass would have would have probably moved the attack and play outside the defender and maybe got him in, in behind. He's the, the the chip through as well. Haven't seen it used much, but uh, aggressive press from uh, from Harlequins. And again, at the uh, the breakdown, Harlequins have turned that ball over. Love to know the turnover stats because again, we tip very very heavily. The way of Harlequins. There's Shauna Brown, who, as you begin to think of your player of the match, I suspect she will be in and amongst your decisions. Bradshaw, nice angle again. She does run those angles very nicely. Again, it was a wonderful pass from, from Rachel Burford. <laughs> Did not need to break stride at all. Brown, look how strong she is. Just put Carla Quinn's on that front foot all day long. She is really someone that has um, come into her own this year through the introduction and support that the RFU has given this TP programme. Beth Dainton, oh, second row, looks like uh, a back row, I should say, for the Fee Fletcher. Turnover again, Watson Waterman. 
fucked up. Serious pace up. And just... I mean, she was absolutely flying. All it was going to take was a fingertip, and that's all the Harlequins could get to her, but it pushes her out to touch. And again, that possession is turned over. Replacement for Moss Ladies, coming off the pitch, number two, Amy Kakane, being replaced by 18, Amy Woodley. Another change for Wasps. So Amy Wigley is uh, out there now as well. Would it? Bachelor again stepping inside. Strong runner, isn't she? She's not going to beat you on the outside for, for pace, although, of course, she does have plenty of pace, but just cuts in really nicely. Yeah, and again, she's a new player um, we've seen come to light this season um, through the, the introduction of all the support from the, the Tyrrells Premier 15s. Burford, normally kicking those balls down Fort Nolly Waterman. Waterman defending it now. She's playing scrum half for Lucas and again Wasps because of their set piece woes having to go from a full 60 70 meters out. Waterman again, Craig who is uh, refusing to give up, having an excellent couple of seasons. Superb this season in the back row for Wasps, superb in these semi finals. Doubt Shaman. As far as a neutral's point of view, we've not seen Abby Dow too much today. Another player down in the middle of the field. It doesn't look great either. No, I think that might be Craig down there after her, her great run. Um, she's worked really hard today in the back row and, and tried to give Wash that go forward and made some great breaks herself. Little break in the play while uh, the medical staff are on there. It uh, is time then, Sarah, for your player of the match. Honourable Richards first. Yeah, I think there's been some um, really outstanding performances. I know uh, things haven't gone the way Wasp probably want, but the likes of Justine Lucas and um, Liz Craig um, and Nolly Waterman have, have really kept fighting all the way through this game, have, have tried to inject energy into into the Wasp side. Um, but for me, the, the player of the match comes from the, the Quinn side. And again, some really like standout performances. Um, just when Quinn's needed people to, to step up, you had the likes of Shauna Brown um, getting her hands on the ball, going forward. Abby Scott again in the line out. That's been pivotal to the success of, um, of Quinn's, both in attack and defence. And you've got Rachel Burford who play significant parts in those tries um, early on to, to get Quinns on the score sheet. But um, for me, my player of the match today is Vicky Cornbrat. I think she's been outstanding with and without the ball. Um, like I said, when Quinns needed players to step up, early in that second half, the line breaks that she made, the, the ball carrying that she did, that took one, two, three defenders to stop up. It has been a fantastic, that interlinking play. Um, defensively, she chops people down and she does her fair share around the park in terms of getting to a breakdown and she's been really solid in her, in her set piece as well. And she gets a giant bag of crisps from Tyrrells which is very very handy because not only can you eat a lot of crisps it doubles up as a sleeping bag <laughs> so I'll be presenting that to to Vicky and I couldn't agree with you more Sarah you could stop agreeing Michelle Brown very very close to her. The, the the work of Vicky, Vicky Cormorant 
at the set piece. We're talking about line out. We're talking about Abby Scott all day, of course. But she has to be lifted. And it's the likes of Vicky Comber getting her up there. Just got Harlequins. I mean, we, we were moving out a couple of minutes before the, the game is over. Harlequins, I mean, really, that first score in the, in the second half confirmed their place in the final. But, but for Wasp, with it, it, an inexperienced squad, uh, and we've said it uh, in parts already, but they will be so much better for this experience in the semi-finals. They've done superbly well to get to third in this inaugural TP league. And uh, to, to come here, just six points down to the reigning champions. The, when the dust settles, of course there'll be disappointment tonight there and, and over the weekend. But when the dust settles, I suspect they'll be very pleased with their season. Yeah, absolutely. And they're, they're a new team. There's a lot of new faces within that Wasp side where uh, Harlequins are probably just a little bit more consistent. They've added one or two players to, to really strengthen them this season. Um, but I think, I think Wasps, on reflection, when they look at this, can really look at it as a marker in the sand to, to know how to move forward for the rest of the seasons to come. Well, Harlequins are also season ahead, aren't they? Because they used last season, the, the, the season with the old format, a joining with, uh, with the Els for Blues, uh, Bulls, I should say. Uh, in preparation for this, they've got Gary Shoot, Karen Finley, two of the, the greatest minds in, in the women's game in, in the British Isles together to set it up. And Harlequins had the vision, and, and you could see that, that they are a little. Bit of, a, of a step ahead of most of these teams because the combinations are working better and it's going to make for a cracky final. Oh, absolutely. They um, they really set the marker out uh, last year and have continued this and they've set the bar for, for other teams um, in the league to to match them. Kate Hallett on and she, her first role is to take a line out. I'm not sure she was the intended recipient but she takes it anyway. Edwards... Can Wash finish with a flourish here? Jackson flings it out. Abby Dow is having to go back. Bradshaw. This is Abby Dow and Abby Dow. Her ball falls out of her hand. And it's another knock on for Wasps. And that rather sums up Wasp Day. But it is all about Harlequins, the reigning champions. They had it all to do today, coming into this game with a six-point lead. But they have hammered the point home, haven't they, in this second leg of this final here at home at the Twickenham Stoop. And today, the final score is Harlequin 22, Watt Sevens, and it is Harlequins who march into that final. And on the aggregate, score over the two legs, 47 points to 26 quite comprehensive on the scoreboard and quite comprehensive on the field as well Sarah yeah I think once Harlequins found their flow um, like we said before the game they, they cut out their, their errors um, they played at a tempo and just at the crucial times in the game just be half time such an important time in, in rugby they managed to get themselves to two tries which was always going to be hard for, for Wasps to come back but Harlequins had had a little bit more firepower about them, um, had more ball, played in the right areas, and just looked after it when they when they really needed to. Yeah, they can rely on a, a very, very good set piece, and a set piece that disrupted was set piece all day long, as it uh, had done in that first leg. So there you are, confirmation of the score. Harlequins ladies, 22, was sevens. Was uh, FC Lady FC seven, All the news on how to get your and they will lick their wounds. But it has been a very, very successful season for Was, despite bowing out in this semi-finals. Giselle May that just gives her final thoughts to her players. But Harlequins will march up to Vallis Way to the home of the Ealing Trail Finders. A couple of Sundays' time, they have booked their place. In the final, will it be against Saracens or will it be against Gloucester Hartbury? We suspect Saracens, the top two that finish the regular season. But it has it has been a great semi-final. Second leg here at the Chicken and Soup. Over a thousand people here at the home of Harlequins. And those 
staunch Harlequins fans have a little bit to cheer about today. Not too much to cheer about in the men's game, but plenty to cheer about in the women's game. Well, let's uh, have a, a wee look back at these highlights of the uh, the second half. I'll leave you the cable hands of Sarah until while I go and grab a couple of interviews. Yeah, these are the pivotal tries from from just before half time, um, when when the game was in the balance um, and Quinn's really needed to come out and get their points on the board they they did and this took them nicely into into half time could see Quinn's there really playing with some patience, going through the faces, and then Demo Cormac there just spots the advantage of, of a missed tackle and going through to, to score. Again, we really saw Jess Wooden popping up in the right places at the right time, again, getting a, a second, second try of the game. When we thought the game was out of sight, Walsh found somewhere to, to dig in and, and come back, um, getting held up from there, some last-ditch defending, but a, a move to Nolly Walkman to scrum half and using that footwork that she's renowned for to, to go off and try and get Wasp back into into the game. And we'll see you back here in the suit very, very Vicky, congratulations! You're into the uh, the TP final. How good does that sound? Really, really good. Like I, we came out today with uh, the goal of getting into that final, repeating what we did last year as well. We knew we had an absolutely massive challenge on us today. The uh, scoreline last week against Wasp was like level pegging. It could have gone either way today. So all we asked from Quinns was, you know, go back to Bobby basics, do the good, like the easy things well, and simple wins games. And that's what we did today. Really pleased. You talk about Bobby Basics, of course. You're talking about that, that effort at set piece, which again was almost a mirror image of last week. You're completely, completely dominant uh, against us again today. Was that the uh, the cornerstone of the victory today? Yeah. So um, set piece is always the um, uh, the uh, predeterminer of a, of a game and what the rest of the game is going to. Um, uh, come out like so if you've got a dominant platform that means that your phases are going to be a lot slicker you're going to get a lot more go forward so you know being in the front row set piece is my absolute you know bread and butter so to hear that uh, we were dominant in scrums and line outs today was yeah amazing well you're talking about the, the set piece work and that's your bread and butter so you're giving front rows a really really bad name around the world of rugby because you're handling the ball you're making yards and yards uh, with with ball in hand how much of that uh, aspect of the game with the ball in the loose do you enjoy Vicky? Oh 
so for me, I always came from a, a running rugby background, and so I am you know, feel comfortable ball in hand, give me a bit of space, and I absolutely love to run with it. But it's a credit to our coaches um, at Quinns. They, uh, they want us to just play. They want us to have a good time. And uh, you can see with, with Quinns, you know, we're looking to get out into the wide channels. Um, we look to go through the middle. We want to be a threat in every different part of the game. So, you know, give me the ball and I'll run with it. Well, it was a tight call that uh, Sarah Hunter made up in commentary between Shauna Brown and yourself. But you are today's player of the match and you have a giant bag of crisps. And I'm assured there are crisps in there and you can use it as a sleeping bag afterwards. So congratulations to you and congratulations to Harlequin. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Congratulations. Well done. Great. We'll see you uh, in the game. Well then, Harlequins have booked their place in the Tyrrells Premier 15's final a week on Sunday.